On September 23, 2017, a prophetic sign appeared above Jerusalem, the Revelation 12 sign. Now this was the starting point of something much bigger that a lot of people didn't quite understand. It was the beginning of something new. A birth was taking place in the hearts of everyone. And when that sign appeared in the heavens, we knew that another would soon appear after it. The dragon. The dragon would come after this child that was being birthed in the hearts of everyone. He would cause a flood to come out of its mouth so that this promise would be swept away. And today there is literally another dragon and we are dealing with the effects of a flood that has perhaps come from this literal dragon. As if these things were working together to tell us that as it's happening in the natural, so it is happening in the spiritual. So we see a flood that has come from a dragon indeed. But there's another flood that needs to be discussed. Jesus said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you'll not see it. People will say that it's over there or it's over there, but don't you go running after it because just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the day of the Son of Man. Just like it was for us. We were eating and drinking and marrying and everything was fine until the flood came and has turned our world upside down. And it is no wonder that we see evidence of Noah's Ark in the news. Here we see the Arctic Seed Vault. You see, God just doesn't do something without telling you first. It's been in front of our face for a long period of time, as in the days of Noah. So it will be. This is the day that we're in. That's why we see the world in the state that it's in. As in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. People, this is the day that we've been waiting for. And while the dragon is working overtime to divide us, to tear us apart, we see God telling us all that it's going to be all right. As Noah and his family sheltered in place during the flood of their time, so too are we sheltering in place during the flood of ours. But God is in control. That's why on the channel for years now, I've been telling people to get ready. Get ready for the flood that was to come. Enter the ark. Even the storms held a message that everything was going to be okay. It was time for us to go to God. It's time for us because the flood was coming. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know when it was, but I knew it was coming because the signs were everywhere. As in the days of Noah, indeed, this is the day that we're in, people. And that's why it's more important than ever before for us to find out what God is now telling us about this flood. Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Welcome back to the future set. It's been a long, uh, it's been a long week for me. I'm sure it's been a long week for you on day like one million, two trillion of the uh, quarantine hit list. Yeah, everybody's buckled up inside their house. It's, uh, it's a fun time to be alive, isn't it? Well, you may actually, you may actually think that it is after this program. Something pretty, I think, pretty spectacular to share. Pretty, pretty encouraging, too, if what I'm seeing is correct. So if you're new to the channel, I follow these things I call breadcrumbs. It's kind of like where everything starts to line up one thing after another. You're going about your life, all of a sudden, something kind of stands out to you and you're like, oh, that's, that's interesting. And then you think, well, maybe I should pay attention to it. But then you forget and then you see that thing again. And then you see it again. And then you see it again. And then you're like, wait a minute, something's going on here. What's going on? And that's basically how we're going to get into Noah and the flood today. Yeah, because this is a message that is, I believe, 100% relevant to what's going on. And I also think that it is a message of hope for a lot of people that have been looking 
for some hope. Because there's no way that all this stuff came together the way it did, in the time frame that it did, without it being something that all of you need to know about. So today, on today's program, I hope you buckle up, right? You're going to find out a lot more about what Noah's Flood's all about, and you're going to find that what we're going through right now, that they're linked, that they're connected, and you're going to find that there is a rainbow at the end of this journey. So buckle up! Welcome back. So, the story of Noah and the Flood. Yeah, you've heard the story, right? But you probably don't know a lot of things about the story. There's a lot of stuff like what names mean and certain things that when you dig a little bit deeper into the Flood story, you understand that this has a lot more to do with you and me as well, okay? I'm not saying it didn't happen. All right? I'm not saying that the flood didn't happen, just so you know, okay? And I do know the you know, flood stories, they're a big deal. They've been all over. There's, there's many, many historical tales that talk about the, you know, the, 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 the gods or God would wipe out the world via a flood. One of them, my buddy, uh, my buddy Mark sent, sent me an email, said, hey, have you ever looked into this? And it's the Epic of Gilgamesh, which very similar to Noah's story, which predates Noah's story. That doesn't mean that Noah's story didn't happen. Just so you know, because I know a lot of people in the comments section, they're like, oh, you think that it doesn't, it's not really real. Jacob, I can't believe that you would say that Noah never happened. Now, I'm not saying any of that stuff, okay? I'm not saying that at all, okay? I, uh, I accept that it literally happened, but I want to understand what it means spiritually. Don't you? Good. Before I begin to break um, the story down for everybody, before I get into the nuts and bolts of it, let me tell you how this came to be. Because this is where the, uh, the, the show gets, uh, it's encouraging. Can't get away from rainbows. That's right. I uh, can't get away from rainbows. For the last couple of weeks, it's just been one rainbow thing after another rainbow thing. If it's not my son, you know, he's doing, he, uh, Ethan, E.E., -E, he's about uh, eight years old. He's, you know, obviously everything's being from home and it's all via the internet. Reading Rainbow, remember that? Look, it's in a book. It's a reading rainbow. Reading rainbow. If it's not that, it's um, the fact that everywhere I looked, I was coming across these strange things, like a tweet, right? Uh, my buddy uh, Nick Hinton, he was like a great Twitter. He does this amazing Twitter thread on rainbows. In the thread, he connected the rainbow bridge to CERN and much more. But it was the rainbow that got my attention. And as we were talking about it behind the scenes, I had said, hey, would you mind if I shared this? because it was important, I felt, because everywhere I seemed to turn, I was seeing this promise of a new covenant. Even Jay Chris got in on the action, sharing the more you know rainbow, didn't know about it, check out his channel, and a new Facebook friend, declaring the rainbow is rising indeed, but it got me thinking. I'm kind of like scratching my head saying, well, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Because the only rainbow I know of is the covenant between God and Noah. That's what the rainbow represented. He said it would no longer wipe out the world via flood. It was a promise that every time that his bow was in the clouds, that it would be a reminder of an everlasting covenant that God promises to do right by his children, by his people, by us. That's good news, especially if you're seeing the rainbow everywhere, right? And the rainbow, just so you know, is actually, uh, it's big, big news. It's a huge rainbow over Denver. Did you know that? Yeah. For the first time ever, you can't taste the rainbow. Skittles has decided to uh, get rid of the rainbow, you know, for, uh, for the month that's coming up. Skittles goes colorless, giving up the rainbow for pride partnership with Glad. The slogan, which is interesting, there's only one rainbow that really matters during pride. That was their, uh, their slogan, but I agree, there's only one rainbow that matters, and it's God's covenant with all of us. That's the rainbow that matters the most, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I 
I've never seen this. A car literally drove through the end of the rainbow. Like a rainbow came down, it was huge. It was actually, I think even CNN picked this up. Fake news, CNN picked this up, I think. So as I'm being urged, right? As I'm being urged in this direction, look into the rainbow, look into the rainbow. I start looking it up. And of course, you know, Rainbow Six, that, that, that awesome video game. I don't know, I don't play those games. I don't play killing games, <laughs> all right? But a lot of people are big fans of Rainbow Six. Six being the number of man, ironically. And Ubisoft Entertainment ju just sued Apple and Google, accusing the company of ripping off Rainbow Six. Did you know that chocolate shimmers iridescently like a rainbow? Never happened before, but this guy figured out how to do it. Of course, the, the Apple watches, they got the face of the rainbow. You know, everything's going rainbow. Time I hear rainbow, I think of Whoa, the... double rainbow, cool, all right, it's a double rainbow, man. Remember that guy? Remember that guy? He became famous. His name was Paul Bear Vasquez. He was a simple man. Uh, lived, he sheltered on uh, the mountain outside of Yosemite National Park. Now, he grew his own food, he took care of things, but he became very famous when he filmed this double rainbow. And uh, he became like a, a meme too, but it was also like every time you heard it or every time you saw it, you felt joy. Well, this guy, he passed away. <laughs> he died uh, f at 57 years of age on Saturday. I mean, and you know, and here I am talking about him and we're celebrating a guy that just, you know, simple things in life. The joy of a double rainbow, right? And that joy was transferred to everybody around the world. He, uh, he just passed away. Now, ironically, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, Nick Hinton, his, uh, his Twitter thread, he's a big friend of the channel. He's been here for a long time and his Twitter actually just like blew up. And uh, I had it back and forth with him because at the time I was questioning, am I supposed to talk about Noah's flood? I didn't know for a fact. And it's like, so what I did was when I started seeing all of these confirmations, like Nick's thread on rainbows, I contacted him and we talked a little bit about it. And what was strange was at the very time that we were talking, he's like, did you check out the Google, the, the Google search bar? And I type on Google, Google, and guess what? Remember that amazing song from Is, Izzy, Israel in Hawaii? Somewhere over the rainbow. That guy, this guy. Google was honoring his, his, uh, his 61st birthday just the other day. And of course, his very famous rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow that everybody loves, playing that. Now that's very coincidental. So there's a lot of rainbows everywhere, right? Have you seen rainbows lately? I have, I was watering the grass, beautiful rainbow. I love that, right? It's a covenant. God promised that every time the rainbow was seen, that it would remind God of his everlasting covenant with us. That means that he wants good for us. He wants to bring us into that promised land. That he wants to deliver us from the wickedness of the day and from our pain and from our suffering. So I see enough rainbows, right? And I start thinking about, thinking about Noah, thinking about the flood, thinking about the covenant that God had given Noah. When I get the email from Mark asking me about the Epic of Gilgamesh, which and I went back, I'm like, yeah, I haven't looked at that in a while. And I listened to it, I'm like, wow, man, it's crazy, beautiful. Another flood story, more confirmation that I needed to come on here and talk to all of you about it. Now, what's strange, if you think about this, is there's another flood that's mentioned in scripture. And it was the dragon in the book of Revelation that this birth that takes place, some people called it the uh, September 23rd sign. Remember when Virgo? Jupiter was in the womb of Virgo. And basically this, 
the scene that is in Revelation 12 played out literally above Jerusalem. And a lot of people talked about this. I was one of them. I have a lot of videos on this where I had said that there was going to be this birthing, if you will, that, that the, the, the hope and life of Christ was going to start to blossom within the hearts of man everywhere. I talked about it on the channel. That's why I keep encouraging people to go to God, go to the source, go to the creator of all, ask for the truth no matter what the cost. And I knew that at the time that that was born, you know, the next the next, uh, the next chapter, Revelation, is when the dragon unleashes this flood to try to kill that, that hope of glory, which is Christ in you. And what better way to uh, kill somebody's faith than to bring a pandemic on the land? Dragon. It's interesting. I do think about the literal interpretation of that. You know, the, the red dragon being... It's very symbolic of China, China being called the dragon, and that this flood, the virus of the crown, this that has flooded the earth, that is trying to swallow, right? It's ironic that in the Epic of Gilgamesh, when Enel decided to wipe out all humanity, right? Kind of the same thing that God had done. He contacted Noah. He says, Noah, you know, build this ark, and... Uh, because I'm going to send the waters on the land. I'm going to destroy everything terrible. I'm going to destroy everything wicked, right? That's what I've been saying on the channel too. It's kind of like if you're doing God's will, it's going to be okay. But everything that's bad, that perhaps all these things are going together for the good of those that love God and that the wicked, the wickedness in the hearts of man is going to be dealt with. And that's what I think is happening right now. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, the, uh, the gods, they were upset with Enel because he wanted to wipe out. And he said, why didn't you just send the plague? to wipe out all of the wicked people. Let the good people live. Why don't you send the plague, he says. Which I think is pretty funny. Or wolves was the other one. It's ironic because here we see another flood from a dragon. A flood of this, which is putting such pressure on so many people, but also bringing people closer together than ever before. Good grief. I listen. I, t I talked. If you're new, I, I did this show. You should check out on the eclipses. There are these two eclipses that cross-sected in little, uh, little Egypt, Carbondale. It's ironic. Seven years makes an X over the United States of America. I saw it as seven years of famine and we were going to enter into like a time where there was going to be kind of a you know, a hunger for more, if you will. And I said about, you know, halfway into these eclipses, before 2024 is the next great American eclipse, that you were going to start to feel the, uh, you know, the python strangle of sheltering in place, perhaps. You know, the things were going to get a little more difficult. Things were going to, because, you know, when you start the be at the beginning of a famine, there's still food in the land. It takes a little while, right? And we know that right now, because of the locust plagues, and we even have these cicadas that after 17 years, they're about to to come out and uh, they're worried that that's going to create more instability in the farmlands. So you see this, you know, this plague of, uh, in Gilgamesh, you see this plague and you see the famine and you see the wolves, all these quick, wicked people that are trying to uh, take advantage. You see, I, while all this is going on, I see purpose in it. I have hope for those who have faith and more. And why is that, Jacob, you ask? <laughs> it's because I see the rainbow everywhere. And the rainbow only rep represents one thing. One thing. Ironically, the world will, you know, take things and they'll twist it and turn it until it's really convoluted and you really don't know what it means. But the rainbow really means God made a covenant with us. He made a promise with us. 
All of this is working together for one thing, just like it did in Noah's day, to get rid of the wickedness inside a man. Now think about this for a second. God tells Noah, build an ark. Take your family, get inside, shelter in place. It's what we're doing, right? Same thing. He tells Noah, bring in two of every unclean animal. See, a lot of people forget this. They think that it's just two, two of every animal, but it isn't. He brings two of every unclean animal, seven of every clean animal male and female. He does this. Let's just say that it's symbolic of duality and then the clean animal symbolic of completion. Now, if, as I talk about on the show, animals very symbolic of our thoughts, emotions, you know, lies and truth, you would have thoughts that aren't clean, holy, and thoughts that are clean, holy. Get into the ark, bring all your nonsense with you and all your good stuff with you. And by the end, Hopefully all the evil will be rooted out in the land. just did a program about the uh, 666, right? Well, Noah was 600 years of age. Very symbolic. It's mankind's. It's when man was made. Let me read some of this to you. The Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in your generation. Seven days from now, he says, I'm going to send rain on the earth. 40 days, 40 nights. Now, rain in scripture is more than just literal rain because there's this thing that they talk about. It's called the latter rain, where it's a pouring out of the spirit of God. It's pouring out of God's truth, a rain. And when the truth is poured out into the earth, what does it do? It destroys wickedness. You starting to see what I'm saying? years old when the flood waters came. So him and his wife and everybody, they escape into the ark. Now, I want to point out that the ark, this is interesting because when you think of the word ark, you think of something enormous, right? Well, the ark was the same thing that Moses was placed in when he was sent down river, when he was a baby, right? He was, uh, he was Hebrew and in Egypt, it wasn't a good thing to be born around there because they were killing, right? Just like the dragon coming after the baby. So we see the same story. The truth, Christ, um, the spirit of living God within the heart of man. Egypt wants it dead, right? So that was what Moses represented. He was born in Egypt, but he was placed in an ark to protect him. And he was sent downstream. That basket was an ark. Same word, ironic. Because here you have Moses, who's symbolic of the law. The law was placed inside of the ark. And then you have Noah. Now, this is where the story gets beautiful. Do you know what Noah means? It means rest. You have the law placed into the ark, and you have rest placed into the ark. I think it's interesting. Because by the end of the flood, the only thing that leaves the ark is God's rest. Noah and his family. And guess what's the first thing he does? Plants a vineyard. How beautiful is that? In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, we're going to get into why that's important in a second, 
On that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heaven were open. The floodgates of heavens were open, much like the floodgates of heaven are open to you right here and right now. All you gotta do is ask for it. And yes, I think it literally rained too, before you put something in the comments section. And the rain fell for 40 days and 40 nights. Now this is important to know, because 40, we see that number everywhere in scripture, right? Very symbolic. A typical pregnancy is about 40 weeks, right? 40 days, 40 nights. 40 years is when you see some people ruling for 40 years, some people becoming ruler, rulers at 40. Jesus was tempted for 40 days, 40 nights. Israel was wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. You see, that number, it's symbolic of a process. So it's going to rain, but by the end of the rain, what ends up happening, right? Till all the wickedness is gone, everything that's corrupt in the heart of man is worked away with, right? Nothing better than we talked about in the last show. I say we like as if there's more than me, but I talk to all of you about pressure and how pressure creates the diamond. Pressure creates the wine. Pressure creates the olive oil. Pressure's a good thing. Pressure is... Uh, it's an interesting thing. Scripture says that God chose the furnace of affliction in, uh, for some people. Chose the furnace of affliction. Yeah. So sometimes you're a, if you're not on the right path, you know what happens? Flood comes. Flood comes. And then everybody has to go and get into the ark with their family. And by the end, hopefully they're better than they were in the beginning. So, I mean, you, you, you can imagine how it must have been hard staying in the house. With, uh, even though with me, in the house with my family, I love it. I love it, I miss it. I miss it terribly. I miss it terribly. I love being around my family. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But for some people, you know, it's, it's hard. Although I am hearing that a lot of people that were having problems in their relationship, now they're, they're doing better. They're working harder. People that were having problems with their uh, kids, all of a sudden, kids are getting a little more attention. Kids aren't acting out as much. There's a lot of beauty that is coming out of these ashes that we find ourselves in. So it must have been hard, been rocked back and forth. How scary that must have been, being on that ark, and not knowing if dry land is ever going to appear. But God remembers Noah as he's uh, you know, being tossed back and forth, and he's stressed out, and he's, he doesn't, I mean, could you imagine? Right, the whole world, the way you knew it, that whole system, destroyed just like the way we used to live our life, doesn't exist anymore. God sent a flood. And this is what we have, a new, a new earth, a new heaven. It's what we have now. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's scary at first, right? But good news comes out of it. So when I saw the rainbow everywhere, I was reminded of God's covenant, his everlasting covenant, because the flood came to an end. It wasn't, it doesn't happen forever. And yes, there were some things that were lost, and yes, it probably wasn't easy, and yes, people suffered. But in the end, it was a new world. One where every time you see that rainbow, you remember that God has established a covenant where we can't fail. And that already happened, and it's happening now. Every time you see that rainbow, it reminds God of his everlasting covenant with us. Righteousness, peace, and joy, and power, and the Holy Spirit. That's what the kingdom of God is. That is our destiny. So as the story goes, after 40 days, Noah starts sending stuff out. He's, first he sends out a raven to see if there's dry land, right? And uh, he realizes, no, that's not the case. Then he sends out a dove. Now these are symbolic because a raven is like kind of, of a predatory animal. It's more of a predator as opposed to a dove, which is, it eats seed and eats berries. It's more, it's more symbolic of, of love. But you know, the, the first one, there's no dry ground. And then he sends out a dove a second time, by the way, and it comes back with this olive leaf, this olive branch, 
I remember being I remember it being a branch, but it's it's changed. I think it's a uh, it's a, what you would call a Mandela effect. I remember it being a branch, but now it's an olive leaf. It is what it is. By the first day of the first month of Noah's 600th and first year, the water dried up. Okay? So this took a little bit of time. It took about a year. Think about that for a second. Before all this was over, it took about a year. I think, I think it was like 11 months. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Okay? It was free from the lies of the world. It's not a bad thing. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number, God says to Noah and his family. Then God said to Noah and his sons, I now will establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, the wild animals, all that came on the ark with you, every living creature on earth, I will establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, the sign of my covenant I'm making between you and me and every living creature and a covenant for all generations, all generations to come, I'll set my rainbow in the clouds. It's actually, I set my bow in the clouds, my rainbow, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. This is the covenant that God established, and it's the rainbow that I keep seeing everywhere. So I think it's beautiful that here you have the story of Noah, whose name means rest. It's a picture of the rest that God gives us. If we are the ark, if you will, right, we're building up this temple of God. He wants his temple to be built, right, but made with his hands, not ours. Little by little, know you that you are the temple of God. You are the ark, if you will, of the covenant where the Holy Spirit resides. Point to your temples. So imagine for a moment that perhaps the ark is you. The flood has come and we're dealing with it right now. But do you see the rainbow like I do? Because at the end, guess what's going to be birthed out of this? Rest. God's going to give us rest from all of our troubles. God's going to give us rest from all of our fears. God's going to give us rest from all of our worries. He made this covenant with you. All you got to do is have faith. It's impossible to please God without it. So why don't you ask for the truth no matter what the cost and uh, find out what's at the end of the rainbow. And I don't mean drive through it. I mean enter into it. I love each and every one of you. I hope that this encouraged you. I hope you do share, subscribe, tell your friends, like, and everything else. Hope I can get my voice back and get used to this new, this new, uh, this new earth that I'm in. <laughs> I hope you're not letting fear rule you. God doesn't give you the spirit of fear. Doesn't give you the thoughts of fear. But peace and joy and the power of having a sound mind. I'll talk to you soon. Look for the rainbows. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can, and have the best day ever.